ideas from from a long time ago. It's some more reviews that have to do with sums uh, because pretty soon we're going to be adding a lot of stuff. So we have to be good with the with the adding business. Um, let me just review for two seconds what we did last time. Last time we talked about some very very famous famous uh, properties. And just in two seconds, let me see if I can uh, recap those. So this one will talk about the three, the fact that you can pull out that three through the sigma. This is called pulling the constant. As long as this finite is, uh, the sum is finite and it exists, you could do that. Uh, it's called pulling the constant. We did that many times before. We did it when we were doing limits and we did it when we were doing derivatives. Uh, this one is called the distributive uh, property for sigma. The sigma can be distributed. Uh, if each of these sums is uh, finite, um, and uh, you could take that sigma and just distribute it, add up all the a's first, and then all the all the bn's first or second, okay? And, and this one, uh, this other property had to do with uh, it had to do with the index. Uh, what happens is often we we, can, we don't want to start off at seven because we don't have a lot of formulas to start that uh, help us figure these out when you start off at seven. So the idea was, we had this brilliant idea, we'll start off at 1 and go to 20 and then subtract the 1's from 1 to 6. Um, and also we had a second take on shifting index, subtract this, subtract 6 from here, um, subtract, let me see, subtract 6 from here, uh, minus 6, subtract 6 from here, or whatever you need to, so you can start off at 1. But whatever you do with here, you have to undo inside, um, so that the sequence starts off in the right place. Here, if you started off with 7, you would get A7. Here, if you started off with 1, you still get A7 because you'd have to do 1 plus 6. That's the idea. That's what we did last time. And today, what we want to do is not so much uh, famous properties, but today we want to do famous sums. That's the name of the game. So it should be pretty much a routine lecture today. Uh, nothing big. Nothing that important. Gandhi once said, Nothing that you do is very important, but it is very important that you do it. Um, that's the case today. All right, so we, let's look at some uh, famous sums, okay? First type of famous sums that I'm going to be looking at is uh, sums that look like this. Let me think, which one should we start off with? Let's start off with this one. Uh, this one, at the first uh, look, it might not seem like it's that famous, or you know, you might not, you might question why. Why would that be famous? Well, let me see if we can uh, put some um, ideas here in the right place so that you can see. Suppose you don't believe it's famous, or you don't realize, or you're new to this. You would go in there, plug in a one there, and you get one over one plus plus one. That would be one over two minus one over one. One over one. Plus, and then you'd be done with a 1, and then you'd have to go to 2 and 3 and 4 all the way to get to 10. For 2, you'd get 1 over 3, um, plus, uh, or no, 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 minus 1 over 2, plus 1 over 4, minus 1 over 3. There, I plugged in 3. If I plug in 3 here, I get 1 over 4, 1 over 3. That's this one. 3, and then I have to do 4, uh, so I get 1 over 5, minus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 6 minus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 7 minus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 8 minus 1 over 7 plus 1 over 9 this is bordering bordering on ridiculous but it's very important that I do it uh, 1 over 9 hopefully I did that right alright and, and then and then you could go on there and try to add the, these ones and add those and every, add all of them but uh, that's not why this is famous this is famous because you can look at it and see a pattern here Here's a pattern for you. You see the one half here and the negative one half? That is negative one half and this is positive one half. Why would I add those if, when I could just subtract them and kill them? Because they're opposite, additive inverses of each other. Same thing with the one third and the negative one third, right? Oh, but wait, there's more. The one fourth and negative one fourth, they go. Oh, but wait, there's more. The one fifth and negative one fifth, they go, they go. Look at this. This is a going party. Everything goes except for the next to the last and next to the first term. So when it's all said and done, everything in the middle collapses and all you get is the 1 over 10 minus 1 over 1. That, my friends, that's why this is famous. This is called a telescoping sum. Uh, telescoping, just like a telescope, you would expand it and contract it. And uh, the idea is that everything in the middle collapses and uh, that's uh, especially nice to compute.
These are my favorite. Uh, and they come in so many different flavors. Sometimes they look like this, like fractions that, that uh, you know, collapse. And sometimes they don't look like fractions. Sometimes they look a little bit more strange. Maybe like this one. Maybe they look like squares. Let's check this one out. This one, I'm going all the way from 1 to 100. So, uh, let's get started. So for I plug in 1, and I would get 1 plus 1 is square, a square. That would be 2 squared. Uh, minus, I plug in 1 there, and I would get 1 squared. Plus, and then I would go for 2. 2 plus 1, that's 3 squared minus 2 squared. Then I would go for the next one, which would give me n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. For 3, I would get uh, 4 squared minus 3 squared, and, and on and on and on. I'm not going to write all these hundred of them. Forget that. Your mind is way too precious for grunt work. I'll just write, I'll just do dot, 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 which means etc. Dot, 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 dot. And I'll write the last part. The last part would have been, to see, when n is equal to 98. For 98, that would have been uh, 99 squared minus 98 squared. Plus, for 99, that would have been 100 squared minus 99 squared. And... For uh, 100, that would have been 101 squared minus 100 squared, right? And then I start to notice the pattern here. What cancels? Um, well, almost everything cancels. That 2 goes, that 3 goes, that 4 goes. Everything goes. The 99 goes, the 98 goes, the 100 goes. Aha. In this case, the only thing that's left over is next to the last and next to the first. So that would be a grand total of 101 squared minus 1 squared. Again, a telescoping sum. Super famous. That should be on your list of famous sums. You can't. You may not always be able to look at that and recognize it. That's understandable. But you can always, always get the courage to just start writing it out. Write the first thing when you plug in n equals 1. Write the next one. Write the next one. Write a few of them as I've done here. And then everybody should be able to see, hey, I can cancel some of these. And uh, and you should just go ahead and do that and, and notice the pattern and then you, you get a nice, nice uh, result. Um, the patterns are not always the same. Sometimes they, they look a little different. Let's do this one. For n is equal to 1, uh, this one's instructive. Uh, for n is equal to 1, I get 2 squared minus uh, 0 squared. Okay. Um, for n is equal to 2, I get 3 squared minus 1 squared. Then I get 4 squared minus 2 squared. See, the difference here is they're shifted by 2. They're shifted by 2. Uh, 5 squared minus 3 squared um, plus 6 squared minus 4 squared. They're shifted by 2. And what that's going to do, I'll write the last few ones. 17 would be 18 squared minus 16 squared um, plus uh, 19 squared minus 17 squared plus... 20 squared minus 18 squared, and the very, very last one, 1 is equal to 20, that uh, would give me 21 squared minus 19 squared. Uh, see, look at this. Um, this one does a little bit, something slightly different, a little variation. The 2s go, the 4s go, the 5s go, everything goes, the 3s go, and at the very, very end, the 19 squared goes, uh, the 21 squared does not go, the 18 squared goes. The 20 squared doesn't go because you because you would need a 22 squared over here, or um, and so well, 16 squared goes, and so at the at the end the only thing that's left over would be the 20 squared and the uh, 21 squared. In order to cancel that, you would need a negative 21, 20 squared, which would have been the next one, but you stopped at 20, so you can't cancel that one. So this one, when um, when the shifting is shifted by 2, you notice something else, a little bit different happening. The previous to the last and the fourth one to the last stay, these don't cancel, and the next to the first and the next to the third one don't go. So your final answer is uh, 20 squared minus, or plus 21 squared minus 0 squared minus 1 squared. I, I'm keeping the 0 squared just to maintain the pattern. Because um, if it hadn't been 0, that one would still stay. Um, so, and you might say, well, can I get a fast and easy rule that I can always use? 
you probably don't want to. It's probably better to understand it. And the best way to understand it, I guess you could make a rule, but I suggest, uh, you know, forget about rules. Rules are for people who don't like to understand. Try to understand it, and uh, and I think the best way to do it, especially if, if this is, you know, you're not an uh, expert on this stuff. If you're kind of a beginner, the easiest way to do it is just write it out. Don't be afraid. Write out, you know, the first ten terms, the last ten terms, and you see everything that cancels, and then, it, you know, you, you almost can't go wrong if you do it that way. I want to show one more look at the, these famous sums. They're called telescoping sums because sometimes they don't look like the, they don't look like that at all. Check this one out. Does that look telescoping to you? I don't see any telescopes there. Do you? No telescopes. I don't see no telescopes. But I think it's very instructive to do this example because you'll see how sometimes a uh, little tweaking will make, turn into a telescope. This one would be the same as the sum of ln of n over n plus 1 over n as n runs from 1 to 20. After all, 1 is the same thing as n over n. And that, my friends, that would be the same thing as the sum of m plus 1 over n, ln of that, as n runs from 1 to 20. Right? And then you notice something famous here. Everyone knows if you have the ln of a over b, you could rewrite that as ln of a minus ln of b. Famous log property. That's exactly what I have here. ln of something over something. So I can rewrite that as the sum of ln of m plus 1, that's the top, minus ln of the bottom, as n runs from 1 to 20. And now it looks totally different. Now it's starting to smell very much like a telescoping. Now I see a telescope. So I start to write them out. As n goes from 1 to 20, that would give me ln 2 minus ln 1 plus ln 3 minus ln 2 plus ln 4 minus ln 3 etc 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 the very very last ones I'm gonna start with 17 on the end ln of 18 minus ln of 17 plus ln ln of 19 minus ln of 18 plus ln of 20 minus ln of 19 and the very very last one when n is equal to 20 I would get ln of 21 minus ln of 20 and I start to see what cancels Pull out our red little pen here. Do the canceling. The ln 20 cancels with that one. This one doesn't cancel with anything. ln 19 cancels with that. ln 18 cancels with that. There will be something else to cancel with 17. 3, 2, 4 would cancel with something else. In the very, very, very end, we get uh, that this would be equal to, very next to the last one, ln of 21 minus ln of 1. Or next to the first one. And when the, sh when the index here is shifted by one, usually what will happen is you'll have the previous to the last and previous to the f next to the first being the la only terms left. If this was, if the, sh if the index is shifted by two, we probably have two. But uh, again, I, I, I don't, I don't have that big on memorizing so those type of rules. I think it's much more instructive to just write it out and see what cancels. Okay. Um, that was a super, super famous. These are called uh, telescoping. Telescoping sums. Let's try something kind of uh, mild here. Uh, this type of sum, it has... You see the uh, sum, summation of 7 as n runs from 1 to 5. You see the, the lack of n's here. There's no n in the sum end the thing you're adding. So what happens then? Well, it's easy to plug in. There's nothing to plug in. So that's 7 when n is equal to 1. And it's 7 again when n is equal to 2. And it's 7 again if n is equal to 3. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So really that's the same thing as 5 sevens. This is a, a very um, easy property to generalize. So you, you could generalize it this way and you could bracket as one of the famous sums. You could say any time I'm adding a constant, I'll say, uh, I don't know, constant, say, um, P. As n goes from 1 to R, then that's going to be the same thing as P plus P plus P plus P 
plus PR times. That's the same thing as RP. You could maybe put a little box around this one and say, hey, you know what? This one's famous. The sum of a constant. Well, that's making a statement. The sum of a constant, right? Um, those are easy. All right, let's do something bigger. You guys want to try this one? Oh, this one is super famous. Let's try this one. Summation of all the n's uh, as n goes from 1 to 10. What that means is, there's a long story that goes along with this. You know, There's a little kid named Gauss. Gauss, uh, he was about three years old and he was already in second grade or something and he would always bother his teacher because he finished his work early and he would go to the teacher and say, I'm bored, I'm, I finished my work. And the teacher one time tried to pull the fast one on him and said, hey Gauss, if you're so bored, why don't you go add all the numbers from one to plus two, plus three, plus four. Why don't you go add up all the numbers all the way to 100? And Gauss said, okay. And he went to, to sit on his desk and before he could, he could just turn around, he turned back and said, oh, the answer is 50-50, obviously. And uh, that started the legend, the legend that we now call Gauss. They call him the Prince of Mathematics. He got his PhD at the age of 17. Um, anyways, what, what, here's what I'm suggesting here. Let's do this famous. That, that song became famous, and this is a little version of it. This one means 1 plus 2 plus 3, all the way up to 10. And we want to add that. Obviously, we could just go ahead and start adding with you can your fingers, 1 plus 2, whatever. But we want to do something a little bit more elegant than that. And so... Um, let me give you a couple ideas, a couple of proofs. Here's one. Here's one idea. I call this. I call this idea number one. If I have to add one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine plus ten, I suppose I don't know what that is. I, I could always call it x for an unknown variable. But here's the clever thing: you write x and you write it backwards. One plus two plus three plus four plus five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you add these, right? It's the same, t same x, just numbers are written backwards. But here's a clever thing, if you write it, if you add these up, you get one plus ten, that's uh, eleven, then you'd add two plus nine, two plus nine, that would be eleven, and then you do three plus eight, well that would be eleven as well, four plus seven, that would be eleven as well, and five plus six, well, again, that would be 11. How many 11s am I going to have after all this? And on the right-hand side, I have two x's, so obviously. x plus x is 2x. Point is, I'll have 10 of these 11s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, and each one of them is times 11. Uh, and that's equal to 2x, and therefore, x is equal to 10 times 11 over 2. Nice. So this is 55. What a nice way to add the x's. That's probably what Gauss did uh, at the age of 3, or maybe he was 2. Um... The prince of mathematics. What this suggests is a general, a general procedure for this. It means that, you know, um, let's see if we can practice this one. That means that that all I have, if I every next time I have to add something like this, all I do is look at the ten and I add one to it and divide by two, and done. And if I was adding up all the n's as n runs from one to fifty, all I would do is say, hey, that's fifty times fifty-one over two. If I was adding up all the n's as n runs from 1 to 100, as Gauss did, I would say 100 times 101 divided by 2, which of course is 50, 50. Okay? But you could add anything now. This suggests that when every time you have the sum of n's as n runs from 1 to r, all you do is r times r plus 1 divided by 2. And that's based on the writing the x forwards and backwards and adding them all up, you get r plus 1. You get r, r plus 1's, and then you divide by 2 to solve for x. You could rack it. This one, put a little box in it and say, hey, this is super famous. Add it to your famous list. But, um, now that, that trick is kind of cute, adding all the x's this way and adding them all this way. Um, watch, I'll do it again. Why? Because I can. Let me erase all this. I'll do it a little. Trick again. I don't even like that one. 
um, let's do it for a small number. Suppose we were adding up all the n's as n runs from 1 to 3. That would mean 1 plus 2 plus 3, right? But you don't want to add them, you know, the, the, the old way. You want to add them in a clever way. So you say 1 plus 2 plus 3, well that would be equal to x. And 3 plus 2 plus 1, well that would be equal to x as well, written backwards. And you add them, you get 4 plus 4 plus 4, and that would be equal to 2x's. So therefore 2x is equal to 3 fourths divided by 2. Whoa. Easy there. Of course I meant x would be 3 fourths and then divide by 2. I told you. All you do is take this 3, put it there, add 1 to it, and divide by 2. That's why I just said uh, you could write this as one of your famous ones. As n goes from 1 to r, this is equal to r times r plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, super, super famous, young Gauss sum. But wait, there's more. Suppose you wanted to take that up a notch and you wanted to add up this, this sum right here. Okay, sum of all the squares. Of course, we want a, a nice and elegant way to do it. We don't want to do it like an insect where you just start doing them one by one. One square plus two square plus three square all the way to ten squared. What is that equal to? You could go on and try to, the same cute little trick here, call it x and then write the x backwards and you write 10 squared plus 9 squared plus 8 squared da, 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 plus 1 squared, but that's that cute trick seems attractive for about 20 seconds and then you realize it's no good. Because a 10 squared, that's 100 plus 1, that's 101. 99 squared is 81 plus 4, that's 85. See there goes the trick because the thing that made it work before is that all these were the same. If I had gotten 101, 101, 101, okay I could play that trick. These are all different. 64 plus 9, that's 73. That's that's crazily different. So there there goes that trick. That's why um, that trick is kind of like, eh, it's all right. Um, but it doesn't generalize. It doesn't it doesn't help you do much more than, wait, where's that, where's that trick? Yeah, this trick is nice, but uh, it doesn't help you do much more than the sum of the x's, sum of the n's. As soon as you get something a little bit beyond that, sum of the n squares, Forget about it. That trick is no good. But, not to worry, I got your back. Um, again, I, I want to be really, really good at this. By the way, why are we doing all this? Remember, this is a chapter on sums. We're going to break sums up into infinite many little pieces that are infinitely small. No hopes of doing that if we can't even add 10 little things, 10 little n squares. So, this is absolutely a crucial review. Alright, let me pause this for a second and come back and knock this one out. So, in order to do this one, in order to do it well, um, I think it's the nicest way to do it is to go back to the other one we just did and redo that one in a different way. Um, the one we just did, this one, uh, redo it in a different way, in a way that can generalize. This way was okay, but it just works for that summation of the n's. It doesn't work for the summation of the n squares or into the thirds or into the fourths. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a method that worked for for all of them. Um, wouldn't it be nice if we had a, a method that we that we could use so we could figure out what is the formula for a summation of all the n's, summation for all the n squares, summation for all the n to the thirds, as n runs from 1 to r and all of them. Wouldn't it be nice if we could find a formula that would give us all of them uh, or that would at least would tell us how to find all of them? That, that would be nice. So that's exactly what I want to do and to do that we got to start off with the easy one, summation of all the n's. There are two key ingredients that go into this. One of the key ingredients is the telescoping sums, and the other key ingredient is just basic algebra. And the other key ingredient is a lot of creativity, incredible amounts of creativity. Uh, creativity to, to know or to figure out that this would be a great starting point. Suppose you want to do that one. This would be a great starting point. n plus 1, the quantity squared minus n squared. It's amazing that you would think that would be a great starting point, but it is an amazingly great starting point. And you could do the algebra here. This would be n squared plus 2 times n plus 1 squared. I'm defoiling on this one, minus n squared. That would give you a total of n plus 1 squared minus n squared is equal to the n squared cancels, and that gives you a total of 2n plus 1. I did 1 squared is 1. And then you do something amazingly creative here. You slap a sigma on both sides. Sigma on that side and sigma on that side. And you let n run from 1 to r. n runs from 1 to r. 
And it's amazing to think that you should be telling turning your cell phones off. All right, it's amazing to think that you know that would be a great starting point, and then slapping the sum on both sides. And look what we have now. On the left hand side, I can compute that. The reason I can compute that is because it looks like a telescoping sum, and those are famous. I know how to do them. I know that if I write it all out, I'll get two squared minus one squared, three squared minus two squared, etc. I know that the, at the end I'll have r plus one squared. I'm plugging the r in there minus a one squared. I know that's what I'll get at the end. Here I know I can uh, distribute that and make this uh, two. Um, let me do it this way. I can distribute that and say, hey, hey, this is 2n as n runs from 1 to r, plus summation of all the ones as n goes from 1 to r. And I could even do better than that. I can clean this up and say, oh, this is r squared plus 2r. And then I have a 1 squared minus a 1 squared. That would go. And here I could pull out the 2. And then I'm going to emphasize that because I'm going to make it red. Um, and that would be the sum of all the n's as n runs from 1 to r, because that's what happens when I pull out the 2. I'll change back to the other color and uh, oh this one's easy to do I don't this is 1 plus 1 plus 1 r times that's just r now look at this equation this equation has the following formula I got some stuff here is equal to 2 times this is the one I want I want to get a formula for that I don't know what it is just pretend I want to get a formula for that and I got it right here and it's equal to a bunch of other stuff maybe I can just isolate this piece and I'll have a formula how does that sound it's incredible right it's exactly exactly what we're gonna do I subtract r from both sides and that would give me uh, r squared plus r that's 2r minus r and then uh, that would give me 2 times my wanted stuff summation of all the n's as n runs from 1 to r oh this is getting good and now I finally I get that uh, r squared plus r over 2 is equal to the summation of all the n's as n runs from 1 to r and of course this is another way to write that is r times r plus 1 divided by 2. Isn't that exactly the result we had earlier? I told you that's why they pay me. <sighs> but this is a lot more exciting than the other proof. By the way, do you guys do that when you prove something do you think hey maybe I can prove it a different way? When you do that you know you're starting to love proofs. Uh, I love proofs. I, I, I like this way. This proof I love. Uh, this is proof is much much more exciting than the other one. You know why? Because this proof right here is like the other proof. This proof right here, this is like an avocado. Eh. This proof right here this is like an avocado tree. Because you could milk it, you could get so many more avocados from it. We could use exactly the same method to find out the, sum, the, the formula for that, we could find a formula for that, we could find a formula for that, we could find for a formula for all of them. All we do is start off with a different uh, telescoping sum at the beginning. I know you, you guys have that look in your face like you don't believe me. Watch this. Let me, let me settle this one now. I'm ready. I'm ready when you guys are. That right there, that's the wanted quantity. I don't know what it is. I'm going to give myself some room here. I'm going to get to work. So let's let's figure this one out um, again the trick will be to generalize the this idea right here the only thing we gotta start the only thing we have to do to modify this to get the other formula would be to start off with the next power instead of n plus one square we start off with n plus one to the third that's why this right here is an avocado tree because you can make one little tweak of it and you get more avocados just like this watch n plus one to the third is minus n to the third. Well, on the one hand, from your algebra class, you would say that that's equal to n to the third plus, again, it's just algebra. I'm foiling this, expanding this 3n squared. There's a famous formula for that 3n well known polynomial. Um, you get that. And you can clean it up. Uh, this piece would, would cancel that piece, and so that would clean up nicely as uh, n plus 1 to the third minus n to the third is equal to 3 um, n squared um, that would be equal to 3 n squared plus 3 n plus 1 that's just from algebra class basic stuff on polynomials but the clever thing the nice thing is again we can repeat the process as before slap a sum on that side slap a that sum on that side as n runs from 1 to whatever you want, 1 to r, as n runs from 1 to r. 
And then all of a sudden you get something very, very, very nice because you get that the sum of all the n plus 1 to the third, minus n to the third, as n runs from 1 to r, that's equal to um, 3 times my sum. This is my red one. This is the absolutely the one I want, the one I'm, I don't know. And everything else here I do know. Uh, this one would be so easy to figure out. 3 times summation of all the n's as n goes from 1 to r plus summation of all the ones as n ones from 1 to r. Easy, 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 duck soup, solve for it. See that? Easy because it's telescoping. Easy because we already done it. Easy because it's a constant. Solve all of this, move it over there, and divide by 3 and you're done. As easy as it sounds, that's all it takes. That's why this is a lot more exciting than the other proof. Um, you can play the same game for n to the thirds. If you want to find a formula, all you do is change those 3's to 4 and figure out what the right polynomial is. But I digress. Let me finish this. Talk is cheap. Let's do it. So this will become r plus 1 to the third. I know this is telescoping and everything in the middle will cancel except these things. And that's equal to 3 times my wanted sum. Uh, the sum of all the n squares as n runs from 1 to r. Plus um, 3. Oh, I got this one. This is r times r plus 1. All that divided by 2. We did that earlier. And this is just r times 1. And I could clean it up some more. This would be r to the third plus 3r squared plus 3r's. Um, and, then, and then you'd have 1, but then you have minus a 1. Alright, I'll write it. 1 to the third minus 1 to the third. And then uh, I'm going to start subtracting all these other things from the other side. Minus 3 times r times r plus 1 divided by 2 uh, minus r, that's the same thing as r plus 1, and that's equal to 3 times my wanted one, sum of all the n squares as n runs from 1 to r. As easy as it sounds, that's all I gotta do. I got myself a nice formula. All I gotta do is divide by 3. Of course, it's customary to clean this up a little bit before you go on and do that. So let me do a little cleanup. A little clean up before we go on. Uh, let me think. I, I could clean up things easily here. That, for example, that goes and that goes. Uh, this R could subtract one from that. Um, I don't like this fraction stuff. Let me do a little clean up here. Uh, so I got R to the third plus uh, 3R squared. I'm subtracting that plus 2R minus 3 halves R squared minus 3 halves r. That's what happens when you distribute that. You get r squared plus r, 3 halves. Gives you that. That one I already put in there. That's equal to 3 times uh, my wanted one. Summation of all the n squares as n runs from 1 to r. Hmm. Easy, right? Easy money. I don't, I, I don't like this 2 here, so I'm going to get rid of it by multiplying everything by 2. So that would give me that would give me, if I multiply everything by 2, what would that give us? 2r to the third plus 6r squared plus 4r's minus 3r squared. That was the point. I canceled that fraction. Minus 3r's. That's equal to 6 times my wanted one. The wanted one. n squares as n runs from 1 to r. But wait, there's more. There's more. I've got more room here. Got more chalkboard. Uh, I could do some more cleanup, right? Uh, I've got the negative r square here. I've got the 6r square. I could get out of that a 2r to the third plus a 3r square. Right? 6r squares minus 3r squares, that gives me 3. Plus 4r's minus r, 3r's, that gives me just r. And that's equal to 6 times my wanted one. The wanted one. The sum of all the n squares then goes from 1 to r. But wait, there's more. You knew that was coming, huh? This one I could still clean up a little bit more. You don't have to do this cleanup, but it's customary to do it. You can factor out the r. And that would leave 2r squares plus 3r plus 1. Is that right? If I factor out the r, 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 that's the same thing as r squared. 
uh, times the quantity, 2r squared plus 2, 3r plus 1. But wait, this one you could factor some more. You could factor it as r times 2r plus 1 times r plus 1. And that's equal to, I wanted 1, n squared as n goes from 1 to r. Oh, but wait a minute, I forgot to divide by 6. No problem, I'll divide by 6 here. My friends, you can box that one. Super famous, famous, famous formula for summing the n squares. Uh, anybody who somebody knows this formula. And you can, what you could do with it is just play with it. So you can get, become familiar with it, you become friendly with it. Just do a couple of silly examples and see how it works. Um, so this formula is telling me that the summation of all the n squares as n goes from 1 to r is equal to r times 2r plus 1 times r plus 1 divided by 2, right? Let's check it. Suppose I wanted to add the summation. Let's, suppose I wanted to check it in blue. Yeah, blue. Uh, suppose I wanted to find uh, what is the sum of all the squares starting from one, from one to four. Yeah. On the one hand, I could be silly about it and just start doing it. Uh, one square plus two square plus three square plus four square. That's one plus four plus nine plus sixteen. That's ten twenty six. That's thirty. Right. That's a silly way to do it. On the other hand, I could use my excellent recipe here. It says, hey, just look at the four. If you're adding a bunch of squares starting from 1 to r, just look at wherever you stopped the r. The 4 tells you everything. All I got to do is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Plus 1 is 9. 4 plus 1 is 5. Divided by 6, and you're done. Let me see. I don't believe it. I could clean this up. This is this goes in there. 3. I get there. 2. I get there. 1. That's 3. 30. I told you. Didn't I tell you? You see why they pay me? Racket. That's a famous formula. Okay, and there's plenty more where that came from. That's why this is such a nice process. It's an avocado tree. You can get a lot of avocados from it. All you do is make one little tweak on it. For the for the next one, you can start off with fours, and you get a sum summation of all the n to the thirds. Uh, I'll just give you a little preview. I think I posted this as one of the homework problems, but you should be able to show that summation of all the n to the thirds, as n runs from one to r, is equal to r squared times r plus one squared all over four, obviously. I'm just kidding, not obviously. I, I, it's easy to remember because it's the square of the one for the sums. Look at this. For the plain ones, this one is r times r plus 1 all over 2. What do you notice about these two? This is the square of that. That's, I'm just saying this is how I remember. It's a coincidence. I wouldn't make much of that um, unless I had tons amount of time to prove things. But I know some of you guys will be tempted to find some sort of recipe or formula, um, which is great, but uh, just be cautious. Anyways, uh, one thing I do know for sure is the avocado tree always works. Always works. You could derive this one yourself by just starting with n plus 1 to the 4th minus n to the 4th. That's the brilliant idea. And everything else falls right into place. Alright, I want to switch gears for a little bit and talk about a different kind of famous, um, the famous uh, sequence or series. That would be the geometric series. Suppose I wanted to add 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared plus 2 to the third plus 2 to the fourth. Something like that. These are different than the other ones. These are powers. You see the index, the thing that's changing is actually the power. A lot of times people will recognize it as this two, summation of all the 2's to the n's as n goes from 0 to 4. You see this index n is happening in the power. That's changing all the different powers of R. Different kind of sum. This is called geometric. Okay, uh, and I want to add this obviously not the long way, but uh, in a clever way. The famous idea that helps you add this is comes back from algebra. Let's do a little algebra review. Okay, in algebra you studied x squared minus one, right? And you said, hey, that's equal to x minus one times x plus one, yeah. And then you studied x to the third minus 1 in algebra, and you said, hey, that's equal to x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. And you studied x to the fourth minus 1 is equal to x minus 1 times x to the third plus x squared plus x plus 1. This is exactly, exactly the key, because this is telling you how to add powers of x. It's telling you, hey, all i got to do here is divide both sides by this, so that's x minus 1 over x, x to the fourth minus 1 over that. That's equal to 1 plus x plus x squared plus x to the third. Look, look, this is how you add powers. 1 plus x plus x squared plus x to the third. 
This is exactly how you do it. You just put it into this formula. That's the geometric sum. So if I wanted to do uh, 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared plus 2 to the thirds, guess what it would be? Well, it would be 2 to the fourth minus 1 all over 2 minus 1, which incidentally, if you were checking, that's 16 minus 1 is 15, divided by 1 is 15. Let's check it. 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8, plus 2 is 10, plus 4 plus 1, 15. I told you, that's why they pay me. See? And you can generalize that. You could say 1 plus x plus x squared plus x to the third plus x to the fourth plus x to the five, 5. What do you suppose that would be? Well, that would be x to the 6 minus 1 all over x minus 1, obviously. So if you wanted to add, for example, uh, 1 plus 1 half plus... No, it's this one half, everybody does 1 half, man. I'm tired of every doing what everybody does. 1 plus negative 2 thirds plus negative 2 thirds squared plus negative 2 thirds to the third plus negative two thirds to the fourth plus negative two thirds to the fifth. What is that equal to? Whatever I'm adding, one plus x plus x squared, one, it could be blah. One plus blah plus blah squared plus blah to the third. That would be equal to blah to the six minus one all over blah minus one. So this one is negative two thirds to the six minus one all over negative, easy there, to the six. There's always one more than that one minus one all over negative two thirds minus one. Take that to the bank. Okay? Very, very nice geometric sums. Uh, using the sigma notation, this would look like this. Summation of all the r's. Start, this one starts off at zero. That's why we had that shift in index idea before, because in order for this to work, you got to start off at zero. From zero to, say, whatever, to p, well, that would be equal to, uh, you think about it, if it helps, you think 1 plus r plus r squared, all the way to r to the p, well that would be equal to r to the p plus 1 minus 1 all over r minus 1. Told you. Alright, it's time to get a little crazy here. <clears throat> um, let's start flexing the geometric sum muscles. What if you had something like, little crazy like this? 5 minus 5 over 3. And then you change it to a plus, plus 5 over 9. Then you change it to a minus, minus 5 over 27. Let's get a little crazy. And then what if you just went on 5 over 81 minus 5 over 243? And what if you didn't stop? What if you just kept going for a few more terms? No. I take that back. What if you kept going on for infinity and beyond? Uh-huh. Take that. Infinite many little numbers that are oscillating, positive, negative. You add something, you take something away. You add something, you take something away. You add a 5 over, 20, 5 over 81, you take away something. You add something else, you take away... Insane, huh? We have all the right ideas to do this now. This would be 5, and you could factor it out. And then that would leave you with a 1 minus uh, 1 third, actually plus a negative 1 third, plus a negative 1 third squared, plus a negative 1 third to the third, plus a negative 1 third to the fourth, Whoa, 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 all the way to infinity plus a negative one-third raised to the infinity. That, my friends, is textbook geometric sum, which means textbook cake. You can do it, because that would be uh, negative one-third to the infinity plus one minus one all over negative one-third minus one, right? That's exactly, exactly the recipe we had here, which is exactly this idea, which is exactly that idea. And so... And then you can do even do better than that. You'd get five times, let me think, one third times negative one third times negative one third raised to the infinity. That goes to zero, so forget about it. It's negative one all over negative four thirds. Or say differently, that's five times three fourths. Or say differently, that's equal to 15 over fourths. 15 over four. Just like that, man. We just added an infinite number of things that are infinitely small with elegance and style. If you add all these things, infinite many ones, they're infinitely small, boom, you get 15 over 4. That, my friends, that's nice. So, um, alright, I think this is enough for me talking. I think you guys got to get to work. Work, work, work. You're not going to learn everything by watching the hands. Uh huh. You got to learn everything by doing it yourself. So, so let me just leave you off with some important reference points. We learned some famous, famous sums today. First one we learned was the sum of a constant. If you have a constant as n goes from one to r, that's k. That's just the number of that's c plus c plus c r times, that's rc. Check. 
We also learned the sum of all the n's as n goes from 1 to r. That's uh, r times r plus 1 divided by 2. And we proved that two different ways. And in the quizzes or somewhere in the homework, there's another way to prove it. That's like three different proofs you get for that. But of course, the ultimate proof is the avocado proof that helps you get to the next level. Summation of all the n's as n, go, n, n squares as n runs from 1 to r. r times r plus 1 times 2r plus 1 divided by 6. And of course, I talked about this one, but I let you do it as a homework. If you, if you add up all the cubes, I would get r times r plus 1 all over 4 square square. And of course, the thing that made it all happen was the telescoping sums. If you have the summation of all the a n plus 1 minus a n as n goes from 1 to r, you plug the r there in the first one, a r plus 1. You plug it into whatever formula you got here, and then you plug the 1 over here in this formula. Telescoping. Super famous. And the last one we learned was, uh, of course, this one, has, the shift, the index has to start at 0. Uh, from 0 to whatever, p, that would be equal to r to the p plus 1 minus 1 all over r minus 1. That, my friends, that's a quick and dirty review of famous sums that uh, that we're going to need to to see uh, some of the greatest ideas invented in the 17th century. Okay?